Getting ready for Christmas can be super stressful. Stick around because I'm going to share with you some of my best hacks to get you ready for the holiday season. This hack is so fun to make around the holidays for your kiddos or really anyone. You're going to need some cookie cutters. If you don't have a pack, I'll link the one I use down below in the description box, but get out a couple of your favorite cookie cutters. Then you're just going to simply mix up your favorite pancake mix. And then you're going to preheat your pan on the stove and then you're going to place your cookie cutters onto your pan. Next, you're going to spray them down with cooking spray really well. Make sure you get the bottom of the pan as well as the sides of your cookie cutters. You're going to place your batter inside of the cookie cutters. You want to fill it up about, I would say a third of the way full because it's going to rise leave your cookie cutters on until you see it bubbling at the top. Then you're going to use a pair of tongs to pull your cookie cutters off. Then you're just going to flip your pancakes like normal and then repeat this until you have as many pancakes as you need. You can serve them with fruit. I'm adding some raspberries to mine. I have a really fun hack to make an ornament using a clear ornament as well as a pack of balloons. Actually, you only need one balloon depending on what color you want to do this. So I'm gonna be using a red balloon. These are nine inch balloons from Dollar Tree and these clear ornaments, I'll link them for you down in the description box. So start by taking the topper off of your ornament and then with your balloon, you're just going to cut the top portion off. All I'm gonna do is wrap my balloon around my clear ornament. So if you stretch it out, it works even better. So here's what it looks like when the balloon is all the way around your ornament. And all you have to do is put the topper back on. <laughs> What's wrong with me? A few moments later. I did it. <laughs> Let me know, would you guys use this technique to decorate your ornaments? So to hang your ornament up, if you forget to buy hangers, you could always grab some paper clips. I like to use the green ones just because they look more like the tree. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your paper clip and you're going to open it up. You can put your ornament on the smaller end and then just pinch that close together. And then with the larger hook side, you're going to put that onto your tree and you can also close that up to hold it really secure. So next I'm gonna show you a hack to make a wreath with a scarf and just a wire wreath form that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. So take any scarf, the thicker, the longer, probably the better. This one's from Five Below. You're gonna fold your scarf in half and start at the top and you're just going to begin wrapping it around on either side, making sure that you cover as much as you can so that you have room to tie it at the bottom. Wrap it around both sides and then when you get to the bottom, you're just going to tie a quick knot kind of fluff it out so that you get the ends as even as possible but this is just a quick and easy way to create a two minute wreath I would love my Christmas lights to be on more, but sometimes I forget to turn them on. So I thought this year, I'm gonna try out a smart plug. Now with the smart plug, you can pair it up with your phone just by installing their app on your phone. And the cool thing is, is that there's so many features you can do with this. One, you can turn your tree on and off. So if you're up in your bed and you forgot to turn your tree off, you can automatically just go into the app and turn it on and off. Another cool feature is you can actually set up a timer for your Christmas tree. So if you don't want your Christmas tree to be on all day, or if you're worried about turning it off at night, you can set it. So I set mine to come on in the morning when we wake up, and then again to go off about nine o'clock whenever we are gone at school and work. And then I set another timer for the tree to come back on in the afternoon when we get home, and then to shut off before we go to bed at night. So I love this. I'm not even gonna have to worry about turning it on and off. I bought these off of Amazon. They come with a pack of four. 
If you've watched any of my other Christmas tree decorating videos, you probably already know this hack, but if not, I'll go ahead and link them for you down in the description box because every year I decorate my tree a little bit different. But one of my number one hacks is whenever you set your tree up and you get it out of the box, all of the branches are really crinkled up. So my advice is to go through and put your hands on every single branch to fluff it out. And I like to really fluff the branches out, moving them up that way, it's going to make your tree look so much fuller, especially if you have a more inexpensive tree. Like my tree is not that expensive and it really helps me to have a much fuller tree. And in the long run, when I'm hanging my ornaments on there, they're gonna hang so much better. One of my favorite things to decorate every year is my mantle. And one of my number one tips to make your mantle look full and complete is to add in different layers. I'm first going to start by adding in two greenery pieces. Now this greenery, I absolutely love. It's from Amazon and I actually showed this greenery piece in one of my Amazon live streams. Now, if you're not following me on my second channel, Liz from McDaily, you definitely want to go check it out and subscribe because I post several of my live streams where I talk about my favorite Amazon products all the time, but I'm going to add these two greenery pieces to my mantle. To add them on there, I have these new hooks that I'm trying out this year that I think work awesome. They're command hooks that actually wrap around and hold the item in place. They're actually made for um, holding cords together but I think they're gonna be great to really hold my greenery in place. I take a lot of time to really make sure that the greenery is even and that it's hooked and secured in place. Next, I'm going to add in two greenery stems from Hobby Lobby. They're ones that I've had from previous years. I'm gonna put those in the middle to add a little bit more fullness. Now, I don't think I've ever had a mantle where I haven't used at least two different garlands. It just adds in more texture. It makes it look more full. So I had this other one in my stash and I'm gonna add that to the top area. And one of the keys is you really wanna to try to mix the greenery together so it looks very cohesive. Next, I'm gonna add in some texture and color. So I had these picks that I believe were from Walmart and I'm gonna start placing them evenly throughout my greenery. I'm also going to add in some pine cone picks. I love adding pine cones. I feel like they're just such a natural element that provides a lot of texture. Now putting together a mantle is fun because you can keep adding elements and step back, look at it and see what needs to be added. No matter your color scheme or style, you can use some of these basic elements to get started with creating your mantle. I wanted to add in these vintage ornaments that I had from Amazon as well. You guys, any product I'm talking about, I will link down for you in the description box. But when I added on the bells, they looked a little bit too low, but that was no problem. I just went back in and put them up a little bit higher on the greenery. So they were just a little accent underneath my greenery. And this is how it turned out. Next, I'm gonna show you how to make a peppermint bowl. This is so cool. So what you're going to need is a bag of peppermints and you're gonna preheat your oven to 275 degrees. Next, get out any cookie sheet and some parchment paper. Lay your parchment paper down flat. Then you're gonna put one peppermint in the center of your tray. Put that in the oven for about one to two minutes. Pull it out and then you're going to add peppermints in a circle around that center peppermint that you just put down. You're going to add about six and you wanna make sure they're all touching together. Put it back in the oven for another couple of minutes. Pull it out and then you're going to do the exact same thing. You're gonna create another layer. This time you're gonna add about 12 peppermints around your six that you put in, trying to make sure they touch as well. Put it back in your oven for three or four minutes. You want it to start melting. And then you're gonna pull it back out and you're gonna add your final layer to the outside making sure again that they're all touching. Then you wanna put it back in your oven for about five to seven minutes. You wanna make sure that the peppermints are melted and you don't see any gaps in your bowl. Pull your peppermints out after it's had five to seven minutes in the oven. Let it cool for about a minute. Then you're going to get a bowl or anything that you want to create a shape out of. You're gonna spray the back of it with cooking spray and spray it really well. 
Then you're going to flip the peppermint bowl onto the bowl that you're forming it around. And then you're going to pull off the parchment paper. Now, if you can't get all the parchment paper off, just cut it off and get as much as you can. You're gonna form your peppermints around your bowl. And I would let this cool completely. It really doesn't take that long, maybe 20, 30 minutes. Then you can pull your bowl out and then just use a paper towel or towel to wipe off the cooking spray in the middle of your bowl. You can style it with your favorite candy for the holidays. So update, if you leave this on your countertop and your kids knock water bottles on them, it's going to break. So I actually made a second one that I could style and show you guys. I wanna show you guys how to put together these candy cane name holders for your holiday party. So you're going to need three candy canes and you're going to put them together so that they kind of create a base. And I just used a little bit of hot glue to hold them together. I made sure to place them flat so that I knew that they would stand up really well. And then I just wrapped them with some Dollar Tree ribbon that I had just to kind of finish them off at the top, hot glued that on. Now for the cards I'm going to be using, I had some scrapbook paper that I had in like a scrapbook paper set. I just cut out some of the labels. You could also use like labels that you buy to put on packages or you could just use cardstock. I'm gonna cut that out and then personalize them with people coming to my dinner and put those out in front of their plate. And it's super festive and it's also really affordable because a box of candy canes is pretty inexpensive. I want to show you how to put together an easy centerpiece with items you may already have on hand. So you're going to need a large glass jar. Now this one I got at the thrift store. So I'm going to start by removing the label. That's always the worst part. And then I'm going to clean the jar out really well. Now for the base of my jar, I'm going to add in some peppermints. I just bought a large bag of these at Walmart. You can get them at most stores. And I'm going to take them out of the individual wrappers and put them at the bottom of my jar. Now this is complete personal preference. You can fill this as high or as low as you like. Next, I'm going to add in a candle. Now the one I'm using is by the brand Melt Candle Company off of Amazon. They come in a pack of three and these candles are three by six. I love the texture on them and they're also unscented. So they're great for centerpieces like this. One thing I like to do is add in some additional peppermints on the side. This just makes it look like your candle is set in all of your decorations. To finish it off, I'm gonna wrap the outside with a ribbon. And here's how the centerpiece turned out. Our next hack is a fun napkin fold for your holiday events. So you're gonna start by putting your napkin in a square. Next, I'm gonna bring up every layer, leaving a little bit of space in between. Next, I'm gonna flip the napkin over. Okay, so this is the part that's a little bit tricky. You're going to bring in each of the corners and cross them. I wanna create a point. Okay, so it's going to look like this. So I have my point up top, both layers are crossed. Now you're going to take this piece, leave this one down here, and you're going to tuck this piece in. in now you're going to flip it back over. Okay, we're almost done. Now you have four different layers here and you're just going to tuck those layers in to form a Christmas tree. Now that I've made all these elements for my table, let me show you how I put them on a holiday table. So I'm gonna start off by putting down some placemats. Next, I'm going to just use my basic white plates. Then I'm gonna add in my china cups. Ooh, yeah, 
And then I like to create a centerpiece. I'm gonna be using these candy cane candles that I made in a previous DIY video. and also using my peppermint candle. And then I like to add a little bit of greenery to my centerpieces. These are pieces that I had from Dollar Tree. I'll also add in a few red ornaments. I'll place my candy cane name card holders out and add in the personalized tags. And I'll finish it off with my Christmas tree napkins. Not this Christmas, we're gonna dance. We're gonna okay. dance, 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 dance. Come on. We're gonna dance, dance, have a good time, dance, dance, all night long. We're gonna dance, dance, and have a good time. I think Santa's gonna come and join us in this song. Oh, yeah. One of the best things about the holiday season is having your house feel super cozy. Here's some of my easy hacks to make your house feel cozy. Now, if you don't wanna get your fireplace going, you can actually put a quick and easy fireplace on your TV. So there's an app called, I think it's called Fireplace Channel. I'll go on here, I find a fireplace that I like, and I'll just add it to my TV screen. Instant fireplace. I love the smell of holiday candles. This one is Flannel by Bath & Body Works. Having a scented candle really helps with the cozy vibes. In November and December, to make my house feel really cozy, I love to have music on my TV. I actually have a subscription to Amazon Music. I love Amazon Music because you can go through different holiday stations. They also have like curated playlists, and then they also have different Christmas albums, so many different things to choose from. So it's fun to have in the holidays. And I usually will just pick a playlist and put it on and then just have it playing throughout the house. Pillows are an easy thing that you can swap out and they just make your house look a little bit more cozy and you can add in some more festive ones. Now, typically you guys know I really like a neutral pillow, but for the holidays, I like to add a little bit more color. So I'm gonna switch out my throw blanket and my pillows right now. For this next hack, I'm gonna show you how to create a bow for the holidays. I love using wired ribbon. The wired ribbon is really important to get, and then I also like using the 2.5 inch thickness. You're also going to need some pipe cleaners. I picked these up at Dollar Tree, but you may already have them on hand. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is start by just making your loops. So you're gonna wrap your ribbon around. Now, however long it is, is how big your bow is going to be. So if you want a tiny bow, you're gonna make it a lot shorter. If you want a larger bow, make it bigger. So I'm gonna wrap it around about, about seven times. Let's do six, we'll do six times. And then you're gonna stop in the back a little bit past the middle. And then I'm just gonna cut it off there. Okay, so now you need to determine where the middle is going to be. So I'm just going to fold it in half and then crease it down. And now you can kind of see where your middle portion is. So what you're going to do at that center portion, hold it together and pinch it on the back. Then you're going to wrap your pipe cleaner around and then you're just going to start wrapping your pipe cleaner to make it as tight as possible. Make sure you have it in the center. Mine's a little off to the side. And wrap it like several times to hold it in place. Okay, the next step is fluffing the bow. And this is the part I think people get the most nervous about or you know, don't think they know what they're doing when it comes to this step. So all you're going to do is simply pull these loops out and then you're going to spread them going to the right, to the left, some you're going to put in the back. So my first loop right here, I'm gonna pull this out and I'm just gonna pull it to the top there. Now my next loop, I'm gonna pull out and pull it to this side. Now with this next one, let's go to the back. I'm 
just keep kind of pulling them apart. Now, if you have like a tail like that, a lot of times I don't pull that one apart. Okay, so that doesn't look great, but that's okay. Just go with me. Now, flip it to the other side, do the exact same thing. Right now, all you're worried about is separating, not making it look pretty. So now everything's separated. It's time to go back in and fluff them up and make them look pretty. So all I'm going to do is just literally make them nice and full like this. And this is where having the wire is really important because the wire is going to help hold these loops in place. Now see that one looks kind of weird. I'm gonna pull it down to the bottom. Don't worry if you get one and it doesn't look right. So you just really want to keep working with it until you're happy with how it looks. Here's the final look. The other cool thing is you can use the ends of your pipe cleaner to attach it to your staircase. You could also put it on your tree, your mantle, or a present. I saw this hack on TikTok on how to make your own foaming soap using peppermint castile soap and a foaming soap dispenser. Now you can use one you already have on hand or I'll link this one down below. So you're going to start by putting in two thirds full of water. I'm gonna put in about three tablespoons of the pure castile soap. Next, you're just going to put the lid back on Make sure you leave enough room so that you can shake it up. And then you'll just, oh. <laughs> now you have some foaming hand soap and it smells like Christmas. To turn it into a gift, I'm just going to use some red and white twine. And then I had a few of these Dollar Tree floral pieces. I'm going to wrap it around here and tie it. Okay, so you have your sprigs, and then I'm just going to tie it loosely onto my soap container. And then trim off the excess. You can give this as a gift or keep it for yourself. Let me know down in the comments what was your favorite hack. I love knowing your guys' opinion. And don't be afraid to try that project you've always been wanting to try. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Make sure you subscribe because I want to see you back here. Bye.